very good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, dear participants. Depending on which part of the region or the world you're joining us from, I'm Anshuman Varma, Program Officer and Deputy Head of the Center for Sustainable Agricultural Mechanization, or CSAM, of the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, ESCAP. On behalf of CSAM, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you to this Asian and Pacific Network for Testing of Agricultural Machinery or ANTAM web training on testing of combined harvesters for reduction of losses and uh, increased safety. Uh, this virtual training is the next in the series of uh, annual training that uh, CSAM organizes under the ANTAM initiative. And the objectives of uh, today's training are twofold. Uh, firstly, to illustrate the needs for testing of combined harvesters in the Asia Pacific region. And secondly, to present an overview of some of the existing testing practices and codes uh, in the region for uh, combined harvesters. Uh, we have an interesting line of uh, sessions and speakers uh, for today's event. Uh, without further ado, uh, let us proceed straight to the opening session. I would like to invite Dr. Lee Yu Tong. Uh, head of CSAM to please give the welcome remarks. So, to you, Tong Lee, you have the floor. Thank you, Anshuman. Uh, distinguished uh, participants, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, on behalf of CSAM, the Center for Sustainable Agricultural Mechanization of the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, ASCAP, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to join our web training today which has become a yearly event of the Asia and the Pacific Network for Testing of Agricultural Machinery, or ANTAM. ANTAM is one of the flagship projects led by CSAM, which aims to harmonize testing standards for agricultural machinery in the Asia Pacific region, facilitate trade, but most importantly, it promotes the use of safe, efficient, and the environmentally sound agricultural machinery in support of the sustainable development goals. ANTAM also has the objective to set up a regional platform of exchanging the thoughts, perspectives, and experiences, as well as providing capacity building for testing facilities and the personnel in its member states and beyond. Today's web training will focus on combining harvesters this was requested by members of CSAM Governing Council and based on the demands of the member states. The world now is facing the challenges of food crisis with trade barriers of agri-food products, negative impacts on food uh, supply chain caused by COVID-19 pandemic, climate change and extreme weather events, as well as geopolitical conflicts. Sustainable agricultural mechanization, including through combined harvesters, can support productivity and reduce the food loss in many of our region countries. Testing of combined harvesters is of primary importance for guaranteeing food security. Another crucial issue for all stakeholders involved in agricultural mechanization is safety. We need to promote a strong understanding of the importance of safety requirements, as well as the aspects that need to test it to warrant these requirements are met. At CSAM, we are grateful to be able to leverage the vast wealth of knowledge of our partners, and ANTAM is an initiative built upon the collaboration of experts from all participating countries. I'm grateful for the support of all member states uh, of the newly um, established ANTAM Technical Working Group, TWG, on combined harvesters for their contributing to this event. And to INAMA uh, or INTAM, the Technical Reference Unit of ANTAM, for its active and irreplaceable contribution to the development of these initiatives. I can see many familiar names as well as uh, several new experts and stakeholders who are joining ANTAM event. Thank you for contributing your expertise and guidance on this event. And the CSAM is looking forward to continuing working with you for promoting safer and more sustainable agricultural mechanization in the region. 
and we and I wish today's web training all success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Lee, for your uh, remarks and for setting the context of the uh, workshop. Uh, it is now my pleasure to uh, invite uh, the uh, next speaker in this uh, opening session. Uh, I uh, call upon engineer Aisha Hirath, uh, who is the chair of the newly convened technical working group on combined harvesters for Antam. Uh, she's from the Farm Mechanization Research Center for uh, from Sri Lanka. So, uh, uh, Dr. Aisha Hirat, the, the floor is yours for introductory remarks. Please. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ashman. Uh, good morning and uh, good afternoon, all. It is a great pleasure for me to speak with you today as the elected chair of the Technical Working Group on Combined Harvesters. Referring to the agenda shared by Marco, it is clear that today we are going to have some kind of understanding on what we have in our national testing processes to test combined harvesters and what we do not have compared to the other regional testing stations. So we, as the technical working group members of Anta, are bearing the responsibility of putting our technical knowledge and experience to achieve uh, Anta objectives while getting its maximum benefits to our countries. So developing a test code, a new test code is not a uh, an easy task, especially for a machinery like combined harvesters that have a versatile uh, use in a crop production industry while assuring the uh, food security in the nations. So I can remember when we are working on anthem codes for sprayers and power tillers, there were lengthy discussions to finalize some test procedures where each country was having different uh, testing methodologies. So. When working in a TWG, it is very much important to pay our fuller, fullest attention and the focus on the activity. So sometimes you may not be the uh, most technical expert in your country, but still you can do the best for the Antem TWGs. You can coordinate with relevant authorities in your country and you can get the information from them and you can put it in TWG discussions. Work together, participate participating actively and presenting your ideas is in the technical discussions. It's very much important in TWG activities. Starting with a few papers, pieces of papers, maybe rough sheets, some uh, draft codes, and ending up with uh, 50, 60 pages, the nicely printed uh, comprehensive internationally accepted test code with your names back would be one of the greatest achievement in our lives. So one day we, all should feel that uh, experience together, not only the self-satisfaction, but also as an engineer, so in, uh, scientist contributing to an international level activity would be an extra qualification added in our uh, achievement list. So I invite all the um, TWG members to take the first step with this valuable web training and give your hands to it together uh, towards the very successful achievement of TWG, TWG activities in Antum. I wish Antum and all the best uh, for the successful program ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Engineer Aisha Harath, for your remarks. And, and I think speaking from your experience, I, I would say remarks straight from the heart. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would now, uh, for the next session, uh, like to welcome uh, Dr. Sandro Liberatori uh, from ANTAM, the Technical Reference Unit of ANTAM, uh, to moderate the following session, uh, where uh, he will first present an overview on combined harvesters use uh, in the region, uh, and then it will be followed by a round of discussions with uh, some countries. Uh, so, uh, before I uh, hand over to uh, Sandro, I'd just like to uh, mention that participants can submit uh, your questions uh, in, in the chat function of uh, Teams. Uh, although the questions would only happen uh, at the end of the event, uh, assuming time is, is available. Uh, so, with that short remark, I just hand over the floor to, to Sandro to please take us through the next session. Over to you, please. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I hope you can hear me. And uh, thank you for 
organizing this uh, training session that I think it's very important also to introduce the work of the technical working group in the combine harvesters. Thank you to Miss Li Yutong, to Mr. Anshuman and Alicia and Marco for organizing uh, this morning. It's early morning in Italy, probably in Asia it's early afternoon and um, this, uh, this training this morning. So uh, I prepared a short presentation and uh, because we made a survey on combined harvesters in the past weeks and uh, prepared some questions and the questions were related to give an idea of what, what uh, or let's say how combined harvesters are being used in the, some countries and what is the market of combined harvesters and especially what are the problems of combined harvesters we have to deal with. Of course, the overview that we have, uh, we show now is not an exact representation of the situation because only some countries answered and I hope that we can improve this overview in the coming weeks with more data coming from other countries. And you see here that we have but together the answers to the questions coming from Bhutan, Cambodia, India, Malaysia, Pakistan, Philippines, Russian Federation, Republic of Korea, Sri Lanka and Vietnam. And I thank the representatives of those countries for having given the data for the questionnaire. Okay, so I think we can move further. We do not mention in the slides what was the, the answer related to the country because it's just to give an overview of the situation in uh, Asian countries. Your country. We have data that are totally different from 34 up to 73 thousand. So it's really a very uh, impressive data, but it's closely related on the sides of machines because uh, most countries use small size machines with some exceptions as Malaysia and the Russian federations. And when there are um, small machines, it means that they are being used also in small surfaces, small fields, because the small machine is working properly in a small field while the large machine is working better in a large field. And we will come back to this point later because it will be, I think, very important as a suggestion for the code on combine harvesters. Okay, maybe we can move to the next slide. And the next slide is the second question. How many combine harvesters are sold in your country on a yearly basis? Okay, even here the answers have been uh, quite different. We go from 45 uh, machines every year up to a very huge amount, 250,000. And probably there is a mistake or some misunderstanding in this answer because it's really a very huge data. So we put the limit in 8,000 machines every year, but we will deepen this point later. So we see that the sales are from 45 to 8,000 machines a year, depending on the country. This data is very important because it gives an idea of the rate of renewal of machines. If we compare this number with the machines being used, we can have an idea on how many years we need to change the whole uh, amount of machines being used in the country. And this is, I think, very important. So in, in some cases we will see we need uh, 10 or 20 years. In some cases we need much more. And this will affect a lot 
the policies for the coming years in the country because new machines we know very well are more efficient and are more safe. Okay, we can go to the slide number three. Slide number three relates with the size, average size of combined harvesters being used in your county. We have from mini, very small machines. Small machines, as we said before, are being used in very small plots, small fields, up to large machines with more than 100 horsepower uh, of the engine. It means that the uh, fields should be lar are larger than uh, uh, to make available the use of a large machine. Um, it is closely related to the traditional way to manage the crops in the countries, the dimension of the machines. And if we compare this slide with the uh, first slide we had before, we can see that Countries using large fields have large machines. 70, 80, 90 horsepower are normally medium size machines. And even if we see the one of the answers was related with the number of rows that the machine is able to work from four up to seven, eight rows. So this is also closely related with the size of the machine. Four rows is usually a small machine. Eight or more rows is a large machine. And even here we see that the middle size, five, six rows, is 82% of the machines being used in the country. Okay, we can go to the next slide, please. What are the crops for which combined harvesters are being used? I can say that the answer were closely related with the traditional crops, paddy, wheat, maize, legumes, sunflowers. So the machines are very, uh, can say multifunctional. They can be used on different crops. It means that they can be used in a longer period during the year because combine harvesters are usually expensive machines. So the more you can use them, the better you can optimize the investment to buy those machines. Of course, the crops are closely related to the country because in some countries they are only used for paddy or in other you see rice and corn. Uh, in other countries, we have cereals, legumes, sunflower, corn, etc. So the more you use them, the better it is. And this data is also very important because developing a code, we have to decide on the crops where the test has to be uh, has to be performed because a machine can have a very good result on, uh, on rice, for example, and then changing some parts of the machine, you are going to use it on legumes and the result can be different. So it's very important to consider the crops where the machine is being used when we will develop the code for combined harvesters. As a Final comment uh, on the slide is that paddy rice is the most important crop because we see it's the mostly used to made with combine harvesters. Okay, we can go to the next one. Question number five. What is the percentage of imported combined harvesters against nationally produced combined harvesters being used by farmers? We had a long discussion yesterday if the data as the way we are displaying the data is a correct way or not. But I think this is a good way to display it because we want to show uh, relating to the countries uh, how many countries import totally all the machines being sold? How many countries import only part of the machines being sold or used? Mm -hmm. So we see that most countries, I can say close to 
two thirds import 100% of the machines. Then uh, we can go back to a discussion we had in the former years. Why should I have a code if I import machine? I'm not producing machines. Even in this case, it's very important to have a code because a code can select the best machines to be imported. And to have this kind of selection means that we can invest and optimize investment to buy machines. So the code is really very important, not only for countries producing machines, but also for countries importing machines. Some of you remember very well that we had a lot of discussion on this point and that we agreed that the code is important for both exporter and importer countries. Uh, a small amount of countries, the blue area is uh, uh, importing 90% of the machines. It means that there is a, a certain production of combine harvesters inside the countries. And uh, another 30% of the count of uh, another one third of the countries we can say is importing 30%. It means that they produce most of the machines being sold in the country. Okay, can uh, we can go perhaps to the to the next one? This is also important question. What are the main critical points of combine harvesters concerning performance? We have uh, quite a lot of answers that do are different according to the different ways to manage the crops and use the machines. We see small size of fields and supply and then uneven fields for other crops, harvest losses, broken grains, Losses. Losses is, is a key point for combine harvesters. Uh, we will come back to this point later. Um, losses is really a key point, even in our experience in Europe. It is a point we are working a lot on it because we can optimize the managing of crops, reducing at the minimum level the losses. Losses are closely related to the performance of combine harvesters. Um, we see that in some cases, the losses are more important in some crops. We see the third answer, losses especially in soybean, green gram and chickpea. Then other important points, as a critical point are the periodical inspection and maintenance. Both may influence the performance because the maintenance of the machine is another key point. Maintaining in a proper condition a machine means that we maintain the efficiency of the machine. We maintain very well the performance of the machine. In some cases, we have a preference to large size machines. This is not closely related with the, the, the critical points concerning performance, but it focuses the importance on having strong points in the code about the large size machines. Efficiency of threshing is also a critical point that has to deal with uh, uh, the losses, of course. Increase of efficiency in high yield fields, work with high straw moisture, without losses and downtime. These are a lot of points, but together. High yield fields means a high performing machine. Otherwise, we do not optimize the chain. Moisture is another important point that can affect the performance of the machines and the downtime, of course, is also important. Then we go down, abnormal stop blockage, grain losses, damaged grain, cleaning losses, 
efficiency in logged crops, low durability. I think we well know these kind of problems and uh, the code should help even here to improve the efficiency of machines. Then the final answer was related with safety ergonom economic aspects. Safety is a key point because uh, only in this final answer we have a focus on safety. And we will come back later on this point. Okay, we can uh, go to the next slide, please. What are the average losses during harvesting? Losses, uh, uh, we already mentioned before, is really a key point. And the data ranged from 0 0.7, that I think, in my opinion, is a very, very low uh, percentage of losses, maybe too low, up to 25%. 25% is probably too high because it means that one fourth of the harvest is being lost, one fourth. This gives a very good idea on how a code can help to improve the national production of crops. You can increase the production close to one fourth or 25% only optimizing the use of machines with the same inputs as fertilizers, uh, chemicals and so on and so on, but only improving the quality and the performance of the machines. It's quite impressive, 25%. And I think that only this data will give a good reason to We see also that the data are different from crop to crop because we see the answer number two, soybean, it goes uh, zero point seven. I think there is a mistake here. A two two point five percent. Then the tiered answer from 3.5% for rice to 3% for corn. I think 3, 5, 6% can be an average, a good average. 0 0.7, as I said before, is very optimistic. 25 is very pessimistic data. Um, then we go to 5, 10%. Uh, no, please. Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Shuttering losses, threshing losses, 37%. Then uh, we see that manual cutting is also giving uh, uh, important losses and so on. Why losses? Why we had that question about losses? Because I think it's an important index. As I said before, even in our European experience, we are working a lot on the losses. We have to reduce losses. And um, <clears throat> losses is very closely related to the efficiency of these kind of machines. Okay, we can move to slide number eight. Question number eight, sorry. Are there other issues in particular concerning safety during the use of combine harvesters? If yes, please list some of them. Here we come back to the point of safety. No issue of the safety. First answer, however, in field repair and maintenance of combine harvesters during peak period is a big issue for farmers. This is a quite interesting uh, answer because we know uh, the combine harvester is used only in a limited period during the year. Then if we have to perform the maintenance in this limited period of the year, it can affect a lot the performance of the machine. If the machine has a stop for more days during the, the period it has to be used, it's a big problem for the farmer. 
and often in field repair and maintenance is done in an unsafe condition. So we have to also in this is a critical point that we have to consider in, uh, in the code and also in the training of operators. Answer number two, cabin and periodical maintenance affecting safety quality. These are two different points because one point is the, the cab, the safety of the operator. The operator is sitting on the machine and then the machine should be uh, equipped with at least the ropes in the cab. Because if there is a rolling over, it's very rare in some conditions, but it might happen. Then having a ROPS can really protect the operator. And also the periodical maintenance. We come back to this point as in the first answer we saw before. Answer number three, safety during field operation, repair and maintenance. This is always the same point, operation of uh, uh, repair maintenance during, done during or when the machine is being used in the field. National standards provide for requirements. Okay, this is a different answer because in some countries there are national standards that provide for very specific requirements concerning uh, the safety. And we should say something even in the code about safety of machines, uh, having a compromise between the different national standards of all participating countries. Then the final answer, training or of operators. Training is very important because you know very well that when an operator is able to use properly the machine, the performance of the machine will be uh, optimized. Of course, in the code, we cannot deal directly with the training of the operator, but we can deal with uh, a checking of the manual. If the manual that has been provided together with the machine contains the proper information for the operator in order to make the operator able to use at the best way the machine. Okay, as a final comment, um, what is safety of this machine? Safety is uh, mainly dealt with the ROPS rolling over protective structure, information on repair maintenance and protection of moving parts as belts, chains, and so on. If these points are properly managed, then the, the safety issues we can say are not completely solved, but are uh, at a good point to provide the proper safety for the operator. We can go to slide number nine, please. The next one. Okay. Main outcomes of the survey. What can be the main outcomes? And perhaps there can be some discussion on this point. Uh, of course, we try to resume in three points. There is the need for a common code on combine harvesters in order to assure better machines in terms of performances and safety. I can add, this is very important for countries producing and using combined harvesters, as well as for countries importing and using combined harvesters. Different sides of machines are being used according to the different way to manage crops and plots sides is a key issue. This is also a very important point that can help the setting up of the code. A code that can have a general part for all general issues of combined harvests and perhaps different 
uh, or special sections, different parts according to the size of the machines and also the crops where the machines are being used. This is, I think, an important suggestion that we should be discussed in the setting up of the code. Point number three, the renewal rate in countries is different and might affect the timing from the introduction of certified or tested machines. This is more a political question, political point that countries have to deal with because they should, uh, most countries should think when they will be Give. Can you hear me? Because I saw there was. We lost you for a moment, but you're back now. OK, thank you so much. Um, this is a very important data because uh, the purpose of having a code is, of course, to have a well performing and to go to a quick renewal of the machines being used in the country. I will stop it here. Uh, perhaps there will be some questions. And uh, of course, we will update the questionnaire in the coming days if more data will come in, because uh, the questionnaire is providing us for good information on how to improve the, the work, also in the technical working group that will develop the codes. So thank you, and I will leave the floor for some questions because before we go to the to the other presentations thank you i don't know if there are questions okay if maybe if there is no questions we will have time even later no questions at the moment Perhaps we could take them at the end uh, all together. Yeah. OK, then uh, um, we can go to the round table. Is that correct? And uh, yes, that's right. OK, thank you so much. Uh, I will welcome uh, the representative of uh, Bhutan, Ms. Uh, Pem Lam for uh, her presentation. Uh, she's from the Agriculture Machinery Center in uh, Bhutan. Please take the floor. Um, thank you so much. I will share my slide. Okay, can you see my slide? Yes, yes, we can see it. Thank you. Okay, okay. So a very warm greetings, ladies and gentlemen from Bhutan. Um, so I'll uh, briefly highlight the situation in Bhutan regarding the bad cultivation. So like almost half, more than half of the population working in agriculture are women. So, and also like 80, uh, 70, 88% of the lands are owned by women, so feminization of agriculture is very dominant in Bhutan. So, like regarding when it comes to bad cultivation, so except for the hardcore works like land development and plowing, ex uh, so rest of the work, which are uh, those are land development hardcore works are done by men. So, rest of the works starting from transplanting, harvesting, and threshing all are done by women. So it's uh, Wait, is my slide changing? Sorry. Yes, it's okay. Okay, so so the issues in paddy harvesting is that uh, because Bhutan is a mountainous country, so our land are very 
like uh, that we have a very steep uh, terrain and the paddy fields are very narrow. So it's a challenge for the farmers to uh, make uh, bring mechanization in the area. And because of the impact of uh, global warming and climate change, so we receive a very unexpected rainfall, so that damages the paddy fields and especially those harvested paddies, uh, which are to be threshed. So they leave it in the field, so this gets damaged by the unexpected rain. And uh, the trend increase of rural to urban migration and also youth becoming reluctant to take up agriculture. So only the older generations and women are left behind in the rural area taking up agriculture. So uh, there is the acute labor shortage. So these are the battery harvesting. Mentioned we have a mechanization, so mostly owing to the land topography and also the economic background of the farmers. So they prefer like repair for harvesting trees. So we for which we already have a test code and standards of our own. So we have a national standard for reapers, but uh, these reapers do not uh, fully solve the problem because we still have to like collect and uh, trash the paddy. So uh, when it comes to combined harvester, we have a total of uh, 34 combined harvesters. So out of which 19 combined uh, harvesters we received last year. So we are yet to deploy those uh, machines in the field. So with the 15 uh, numbers of combined harvester, we have covered around uh, 720 acres in the field and because of the economic background of the farmers. So these, these combined harvesters are provided to the farmers on hiring services. And uh, those uh, combined harvesters are only feasible in some areas where the lands are flat and uh, uh, have uh, larger areas. So although like the carbon, carb, uh, combined harvester is introduced late in Bhutan in uh, late 2016, so like farmers are becoming familiar with the advantages of the uh, uh, combined harvester and also like with the development and mechanization coming in place. So uh, farmers are consolidating their uh, uh, fields and uh, making it into larger areas and uh, coming into commercial fields. So the demand for combined harvester is increasing and also uh, the demand in the future for combined harvester is expected to increase with the government's plan uh, to develop the agriculture lands. So uh, thank you. OK, thank you very much for your presentation. I think uh, uh, very interesting. And also, what is the key point that we should consider in making the, the code? Is the use by women of the combine harvesters? Because it's very important, as you emphasized in your presentation, uh, this point. So thank you so much for this. Um, I see the time is running fast, and I give the word to Ms. Dr. Chao Sin of the Agricultural Post Harvest Technology Office of Cambodia. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Sandro. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, before I'm going to the uh, testing needs for Cambodia, I just want to uh, briefly give you an overview of the Cambodian agriculture. The agriculture sector in Cambodia remains an important one. It contributes about one third of the economy and employs about 40% of the workforce. And it is the main income for people living in rural areas. Paddy rice is the dominant crop in the country. Uh, the main areas are in pink and green on the map. So it's the region around the Tongle Sab Lake and the Mekong Plain. For the land holding size per household in Cambodia, um, the farm size is relatively small. The majority is less than one hectare. Per household. And if we look at the farm side per province, uh, the province with the larger farm side uh, 
they have a more advanced mechanization and also the size of the machine in use also they are larger with the provinces with larger farm size. Overall, the, the number of machineries in use in Cambodia, uh, the overall they are increasing uh, year by year and most notably uh, the power tiller and water pump. If we look at the numbers of uh, combined harvesters in use uh, for the last 10 years, uh, we, we saw that the, the trend uh, increasing from uh, 2011 until the uh, 2018. And then the number for the last few years seem uh, remain the same. And we don't have the ex exact reason why uh, the number remained the same, but there's two possibility. Uh, the first one is that um, the supply and demand already met. So uh, the number we have now is the maximum maximum number required for the harvesting. And another possibility is that the size of the machine are increasing. So the larger machines are replacing the smaller ones. We so far Cambodia we don't have uh, our national testing codes, so 100% uh, of the harvesters are imported. So we, we would like um, to have uh, the codes because the uh, paddy right is the dominant crop, so we prefer uh, end time to have the code for harvester for paddy rice. And uh, according to the uh, farm side, we prefer less than uh, 100 horsepower in capacity. And also, uh, as the, you saw in uh, Sandro's uh, presentation, losses is very uh, major issue in uh, Cambodia. And so uh, particular attention should be um, given to the Ripping, cutting mechanism and the uh, threshing mechanism as uh, central or dimension. So uh, I hope that uh, the technical working group will focus more uh, on this, how to uh, regulate uh, these me mechanisms uh, to minimize the risk. And also um, in the last few we, we, we saw the impact of uh, the climate change. So uh, there are unseasonal rains. So um, during the harvesting time, the field condition now tend to be wet. So uh, the machine should be uh, test again their suitability to operate in wet condition as well. And lastly, um, here in, in Cambodia, maybe like in other countries as well, uh, we have problem with straw management. Normally, uh, the, the farmers just burn the straw after harvesting. And so this is uh, optional if uh, the code we should consider the system or uh, equipment that attached to the harvester uh, to manage the straw is also uh, appreciated. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation and uh, uh, it's interesting to see this especially the size of farms the size of farms that's quite small and that it should uh, it's it's important when you consider when how the farmer is able to buy such a machine perhaps uh, um, a use of combined harvesters by more farmers together can be can be interesting. Yeah, here uh, I, I just want to add um, here uh, the majority of the harvester are for hiring services, not not owned by individual farmer. Most of them are for okay. hiring. Yeah. Okay, that's in, that was the answer, proper answer. Thank you very much. So I give the word to Doctor um, um, one more Adnan from uh, Magdi in Malaysia for his presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Sandro. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, 
I would like to test this uh, opportunity to thank the organizer for giving me a chance to participate in this uh, web training. The organizer, could you please uh, share my uh, slide, please? Okay, today uh, I will share about our experience in utilization of uh, combined harvester to facilitate operation in rice production and uh, its performance control. Next slide, please. In Malaysia, there are about uh, 1,500 units of uh, combined harvester, uh, which is currently in use to harvest 400,000 hectares of uh, total planted area of rice. And uh, about 15% of the harvester is owned by uh, government sector. For grain corn, uh, we are using mini combined harvester and uh, currently uh, about 4% of the total numbers of combined harvester that owned by government sector are dedicated for grain corn uh, harvesting. And most of our combined harvester is uh, B1 because uh, B1 uh, which is uh, around 80% and the rest is small or many types of uh, combined harvester. And for information, uh, all of uh, our harvester are imported. About the brand, uh, there are several famous brands uh, which is currently in use, such as uh, New Holland's, Class, Case, uh, Worcester, Kubota, and others. Regarding to the types of uh, combined harvester, the tangential flow is mostly installed at our big harvester and the uh, small or uh, mini combined harvester is mostly used the SGF flow concept to trash and process the grain. There are several issues uh, associated with uh, utilization of combined harvester in Malaysia, uh, such as uh, no specification and reference model that's suitable for local usage, uh, improper maintenance and setting, a uh, lack of skill, uh, manpower, and also no SOP, no standard operation procedure to monitor the harvester operation. These issues uh, have resulted or contributed to high losses rate during uh, harvesting. Uh, most of uh, big harvester in uh, our country is uh, reconditioned from uh, imported use with harvester. Uh, this, uh, the inconsistency of uh, workmanship quality and no standard for reference during the condition process has affected performance of the harvester, especially rice field uh, during uh, harvesting. Okay, next slide. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, next slide, please. Uh, in order to reduce the grain loss during harvesting, uh, we are developed. We have developed three SOP, uh, namely for inspection, maintenance, and operation of the combined harvester. Standard operation procedure for harvester inspection is used to check and verify condition and also performance of new and reconditioned combined. Evaluation of harvesting performance includes study on uh, grain loss rate, content of material other than grain, MOG, uh, field work capacity, ground contact pressure, and also optimum operation speed. Meanwhile, for Standard operation procedure for harvester maintenance is used to ensure the harvester in, is in tip-top condition by implementing periodic maintenance prior to operation at field. The last one, uh, the SOP for harvester operation is used to achieve uh, optimum performance by following the proposed guideline to reduce the grain loss rate. To facilitate implementation of the standard operation procedure, we have uh, developed and uh, used the mobile apps for harvester. And as of now, implementation of these mobile apps is on a volunteer basis, especially for combined harvester that's owned by government sector. The benefits uh, of using these mobile apps are uh, to ensure good condition of harvester during calibration based on the SOP and also to simplify filing checklist process. It also as a system to identify harvester condition. And the last one, of course, to prolong harvester lifespan by doing proper maintenance. Besides that, 
Uh, we are also have conducted grain loss verification on combined harvester during harvesting process. The losses verification was uh, focused on focus at header and uh, threshing mechanism. Based on the result that we obtained from the verification activity, the average grain loss before control measure in place is 9%. However, after we have implemented the SOP and mobile apps, the achievement of grain loss percentage is 5%. The verification of grain loss is conducted, also conducted on a new harvester, which is, has resulted ro lower ro losses, which is 2% and below. Ladies and gentlemen, next slide please. Move to next slide. We are we are in progress of uh, setting up the machinery testing laboratory uh, for the combined harvester. Uh, we have uh, prepared the SOP and also purchased two units of new combined harvester as reference model for tangential flow and also for the SGF flow uh, to enhance the facility and uh, equipment at our testing center. Uh, we would like to seek assistance and advice from intern members in the development of test rig and other related requirements for combined harvester. Prior to implementation of intern test code, manpower training is necessary to enhance the testing skill and uh, knowledge. Lastly, uh, thank you very much for your kind attention and I return back the session to Dr. Sandra. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. And I think you gave a very good overview on uh, the effectiveness of checking and testing the machine. So it's uh, a great support for the testing uh, code uh, in the Anthem network. Thank you so much for this. Um, so I saw that one of the questions uh, that uh, was in the um, in the chat was about uh, how losses are calculated. This is an important point we will discuss in the technical working group to give a uniform way to uh, define the calculation of losses and avoid the great changes in data that we saw in the previous slides. So thank you so much. I will give again the floor to uh, Dr. Anshuman for the next section. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandro, uh, for the moderation of the previous session. And uh, uh, of course, very interesting, very informative uh, presentations uh, given by the speakers in, in the session. Um, we will now move to uh, the next session on um, national codes features for food loss uh, prevention and safety. So uh, in this session, uh, we will have an overview of uh, some of the national codes from the different countries uh, in, in the region. Um, we have uh, a panel of uh, four uh, presenters uh, representing uh, China, India, uh, the Republic of Korea and the Russian Federation. Uh, and each of them are going to outline some of the key features in these two um, key aspects of, of, of the codes on food loss prevention and on safety. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, let me uh, go ahead and uh, invite the first uh, presenter uh, in the session. I'll call upon uh, Mr. Fan Jian from the China Agricultural Mechanization Center. Uh, to please take the floor for his presentation. Uh, each speaker will have about 15 minutes uh, for the presentation. And since we are running slightly tight on time, I would request you to please adhere Hello. to the assigned time. Over to you, uh, Mr. Fang Jian. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Please go ahead with your presentation. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Feng Jian from China Agricultural Magnetization Center. Today, my speech topic is detect detection technology of combined harvester and the loss reduction and of magnetite harvesting in China. This speech is divided into three parts. First is, main, is national codes for combined harvester. Second part is detection technology of combined harvester. Uh, last one is a suggestion on reducing the 
loss of harvesting operation. First one, national codes. In China, there are more than 20 standard standards related to combine harvester. At least some main, main product technology, technological standards and safety standards. Uh, in this picture, uh, show the product technological uh, technical standards. First one is test procedure uh, for harvesting combined harvester. Second one and the second one, uh, second and the third is uh, hand feed combined harvester and the whole feed com combined harvester for techno technical requirement. Uh, the, the first is re li uh, reliability de determination test mice, uh, te test mice for gray combined harvester. Uh, uh, it's worth mentioning that uh, last uh, one and two um, is uh, there are issued by the Ministry of Agricultural and Rural Affairs. It's an important basis for the testing work, uh, for testing work for the testing institute, uh, testing centers for agricultural machinery. Uh, These standards, uh, the main contents terms and the definitions uh, of combat harvester, technical requirement, fuel performance testing methods, production compatibility test methods. This is a safety requirement. Uh, one, uh, GB1039.1 and GB1039.2 is uh, in China uh, are national uh, compa compulsory uh, standards must implement. Uh, the main content is the safety protection, safety requirement, safety performance. Uh, for example, breaking noise and safety inform uh, information science. That means safety science. Now I will. I will introduce some science division of combined harvester. Uh, I take I take green, sorry. I take green and uh, maize as an example. This is great combined uh, combined harvester for site division. Types of machinery, whole feed and uh, hand feed is different. Whole feed combined harvester depend on routing throughput. Uh, Wield is uh, more greater, uh, greater than or equal to five is large, to between two and uh, five median, small that means less, less than or equal to two. Tracked is different the wield. Hand feed Combined harvester depend on working rules. Uh, when the machinery uh, working rules more than five or equal to five is large. Two or four is middle. Uh, less than two and equal to two, that's small. I show some picture. One and picture one and picture two is a large in China. Large large signs. The, uh, the third one is hand feed. Uh, working rules is two, so it's a small one. This is a core combine, combine harvester. Type of machinery uh, depend, size, di size division depend on uh, hand working widths. When the working width is more than greater than or equal to 280 uh, centimeters is large 160 between uh, one uh, between two 160 and uh, two to 80 is the middle less than the 160 is small uh, the first picture is picking and peel um, mass air self self propelled 
how is the five rows? Uh, it's hand working width is 201 centimeters. That is a uh, middle. Two is a uh, large because it hand work with more than 290s. The, the picture three is a small one because it's less than the 160. The second part is detection of detection technology. Uh, first, I introduced main texting in terms of combined harvester. For com combined harvester, the working performance indicat indicators concerned are total loss rate, impurity rate, and broken rate. Top one is in China working performance. Uh, and term is total loss rate percent uh, weight is less than or less than or equal 1.2 percent rice rice harvester uh, that's less than the 2.8 for maize different type is different uh, maize air harvester less than four uh, thrashing harvester less than five impurity and broken root root we can see the tape but pay attention the top the above in the uh, in the characters are under the process that the test conditions meet the standard requirements today i will introduce uh, i will key operate operation and the character is total loss. In Chinese, uh, in Chinese combo harvest, detection mass, total loss include process loss and uh, uh, gathering loss. Process loss, that means during the harvest press, proceed, process, grain loss during to threading, separating, and clean. Gathering loss, that means during the harvest press, process, Great loss due to falling of hand, handers and uh, other fading devices. How to detect the loss rate of combined harvest? Step, step one is choose the test area. Uh, in China, the test area lasts in more than 25 minute, meters, tech, uh, and uh, we can, we can detect it mentioned the condition, texting condition, uh, including basic condition, conditions of crops and fuels, including soil most, moisture, moisture content, um, ritual between straw and grain, grain moisture content, lowest head of spikers, According to the tax results, it means what, uh, whether the tax area or tax condition condition uh, condition the standard requirements. Satisfied, continued, dissatisfied, need to reset. Step step one. Uh, step two. Test pro process. We need to recording operation. Operating time, receiving all discharge from machine, including uh, selecting green and steam samples. I will see the video. This video shows the combined harvester detection fuel process. We can look. Okay. In the video, one person recording the op operating times. Four person person use a sample clothes to receive all grains and steams and wait the wait them this is the whole process okay step three is result calculation first one is q that means uh, that means throughput uh, throughput the throughput q equal to wv divided by t 
W V that means total mass of grass streams and clean uh, estimate is fluent receiving by text area. Time that means time through the test area. Second one is process loss rate. This formula formula is very simple, so I won't see more. But uh, teach tension this mass from and surrounding w w w that means and surrising loss of gravity w f that means uh, suspension uh, suppression loss of grade the w q that means the clean loss of grade last one is gathering loss rate gathering loss rate pay attention w g s that means actual loss per square meter of handles. That's a cal calculation value. The last is total loss rate. That means process loss rate and the gathering loss rate. The last part is suggestions. First, uh, I will introduce machine loss reduction working in China. From First one is government attached the important to food laws. In China, government promotes the loss reduction of grain crop machinery constantly. The general agricultural and rural system has widely organized the carry out large scale training, public uh, publicity and competition activities for machine harvest reduction. The three, uh, the four pictures are some government documents and some activity re, uh, activity news reports. We can see a video. This video is com competition activity for machine harvest, harvest reduction in Guangzhou. Guangdong. Okay. Uh, uh, this activity government uh, organized the local operators of rice combine harvester and the same rice conditions use the same type of combine harvester, uh, compare their harvest rice loss rates. And uh, in the activities, we onset detection loss rice. This is working and uh, Different people use the same type harvester. After working, we detect the lorries. The people detect the lorries by professional tester. And through this activity, improve the op operator's operation level and reduce for uh, uh, and reduce full losses. Second is stressing stress the machine operator training. The technical level and the prof professionalism of harvester drivers di directly determine, determine the quality of harvesting operations. So organization to carry out the professional angle cultural machinery hand training action improve the operator's operating ability and reduce the full reduce the full loss by machine harvesting. This picture is some training for the farmers and the operators. Okay, the, the second one is publishing some operation technical documents for God, uh, for get the operate operators to reduce food loss when harvesting operations uh, the government published the technical guidance 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 of magnetized harvesting and loss reduction of rice wheat and maize successfully first one is wheat second one is rice and the third one is wheat and maize Second part, 
uh, suggestion is main measures to reduce food loss, food loss loss. This this part is for farm or operators. First one is choo choosing suitable harvest time. Depend on depend on the crop uh, crop output. We, for example, wheat and rice between the end of waxing maturity and the initial stage of complete ripeness. Second is ad adjusting harvest uh, parameters. During the operation, should choose the appropriate operating parameters and according to the different um, Nearest conditions and crop conditions to adjust the machine in the tightly manner. So that the harvester to maintain good working condition, reduce the machine loss, improve the quality of comparison. Third one is selecting operation route and the operations speed. During the, during the operation, the machine should be selected according to the actual situation by the fit. It's uh, convenient and faster to unload the grid and uh, minimize the empty line of machine. Uh, according to the fit condition and the crop condition to the right speed. This is uh, for testing center and, uh, uh, and the company. Uh, we should, we, uh, Issues that combined harvester are tested for efficiency helps achieve full food security. We need to formulate, formulate reasonable detection methods and detection inductors. Using this, uh, using the text result feedback to the combined harvester uh, production enterprises, promote them to improve production quality to achieve the Purpose, purpose of reducing food losses in general. The, com, combat, the combined harvester taxing for reduced food is very important. Thank you. This is my speech today. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Fangjian, for the presentation uh, by highlighting, I think, some of the very key and important features. Uh, uh, for uh, the testing of combined harvesters, and I think you've ended you've ended the presentation on a very key note. Is uh, you know the the importance uh, of uh, you know e efficiency and uh, and and performance for uh, reducing uh, food loss. Uh, so thank you. Uh, so we'll now move on to the next uh, presentation uh, in this session uh, from India. I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Mukesh Jain. Uh, from the Northern Region Farm Machinery Testing Institute in India to please take the floor for uh, his presentation. So, Mr. Jain, uh, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Verma. Is it uh, visible? Yes, it is. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Verma. Warm greetings from India. So basically, I will uh, talk about the uh, course that is available in India for testing of combined harvester. So in India, uh, for uh, monitoring the standards, we have Bureau of Indian Standards, and it has developed around more than 400 test codes for uh, farm machinery. And uh, Bureau of Indian Standards have its own regional laboratories to test agricultural machinery and give certification. And uh, if we talk about different type of combined harvesters that are tested in India, basically we have self-propelled combined harvesters. We have a tractor mounted combined harvesters. So this type of harvesters are basically predominantly used in India. We all know that uh, the harvesters are used for only a, a small duration of time, only during harvesting season. So this uh, tractor operated combined harvesters, so this can be easily uh, dismounted. It can be used for other purpose and during the harvesting season, it can be again mounted and it can be used for uh, harvesting purpose. So nowadays in India, we do have a track type of combined harvesters for harvesting in uh, paddy fields. 
and uh, one more uh, combined harvester it's a pto driven uh, basically tractor pto driven combined harvesters so slowly it's being picking up in india so if we talk about the test how we go for testing so in the, for a manufacturer who initially submits his uh, sample they go for initial commercial test once a manufacturer is ready to go for commercial production he can submit his sample for initial commercial test so uh, the test report that is issued is valid for 7 uh, years and after the completion of 7 years the manufacturer is again request is uh, required to uh, get his sample tested under batch test so its validity period is 5 years and if uh, some variation is done in a basic commercial model so he can submit a a variant test we can submit his sample for variant test so small variations i can give him a new model so if a manufacturer wants to establish uh, the r and d information want to create or generate r and d information he can submit a uh, sample for confidential test whose information will be kept uh, confidential apart from these uh, testing we do have conduct uh, combined harvester testing under cmvr center motor vehicles rules act so basically this is a uh, testing which is conducted to assess the road worthiness so these are the basic standards which are used in india so uh, the one of the standard is 8122 which is which gives the information about the terminologies which are used in combined harvesters 8122 this is for performance evaluation of the combined harvester and uh, nowadays uh, after 2018 in india we have also implemented the minimum performance standards that is recommendations on selected performance and other characteristics it indicates that unless and until a combined harvester uh, basically follows the minimum performance standards uh, then if it doesn't follow then those combine harvesters are not supported under government program even those combine harvesters are not given any bank loans so by this uh, standard we are basically controlling the minimum performance in india so basically uh, we are conducting these uh, tests for combine harvesters we basically give the uh, study the specifications given by the manufacturer engine performance test so if it is a self propelled engine we conduct engine testing if it is a tractor operated we basically take the report of the tractor then header lifting test uh, see the performance of the header then turning ability again it's related to the safety aspect center of gravity test visibility again one of the important uh, parameter for safety brake test mechanical vibration test which is related with the comfortness of the operator noise level again comfort level it indicates the com comfortness of the operator wear of critical components and air cleaner oil pull over test so if we talk about the engine performance test we conduct the engine performance test with the help of a dynamometer it's uh, evaluated under natural ambient that is uh, 27 degree plus minus 7 degree and under high ambient condition that is 43 degree plus minus 2 degree then five hours rating test under high ambient conditions so in which we basically uh, generate data for brake horse power engine speed fuel consumption and specific energy so these are the graphs which are uh, made after the uh, generation of data to understand the characteristic of the engine so the header lifting test is conducted uh, so that we want to know uh, after 1000 cycles of uh, lifting the header there should not be any leakage or there should not be it should basically satisfactorily complete the testing of header lifting test then turning ability test it's conducted uh, to know the diameter of turning circle and diameter of turning space how much minimum uh, diameter is required to turn the combine harvester so again one of the important parameter for safety that's the center of gravity test is conducted to know where the center of gravity lies in the combined harvester 
so it is the visibility test basically uh, we assert want to ascertain whether the uh, cutter bar or header assembly is visible when he sits on the combined harvester without any hindrance so we conduct this uh, visibility test the shaded area basically indicates that these areas are not visible when the operator sits on the seat but this area is clearly visible noise level test it's uh, basically measured at two position one is at the bystanders position the person who is standing at the nearby place and one at the operator's ear level so the noise should not be more than 88 decibel for the bystanders position and it should not be more than 98 decibel uh, information to the participants so these are the data which is basically taken from one of the combined harvesters test report so mechanical vibration test it basically gives an information about the how much vibration is transmitted to different components so basically we are concerned about the whole body vibration so that the vibration is less the operator can work for more time at a comfort position so if we take if you see this data as per our code the vibration should not be more than 120 or 150 microns but most of the components the vibration level is on higher side here our manufacturer have to work harder to minimize this vibration so then again one of the safety aspect we conduct a brake test so we conduct a two test one is cold brake test and hot brake test so in which we basically determine what is the stopping distance and what is the braking device control force and moreover the parking brake test is also conducted on slopes 12% slope so that uh, it should work satisfactorily air cleaner oil pull over test so when the uh, combined harvester works on a slope the oil should not go inside the engine so it should not be more than 0.2% the oil pull over should not be more than 0.2% so far we want to ascertain the performance of the combined harvester in the field so if a manufacturer wants uh, to perf- uh, want to use the combined harvester only in paddy we test in the paddy field for 50 hours otherwise we conduct the field performance in two crops wheat and paddy for 25 hours each quality of work we determine the quality of work rate of work fuel consumption ease of adjustment operator's comfort and safety so these are the crop parameters we determine so these are the parameters for rate of work of the combine so what is the actual air it's covering what is the fuel consumption what is the net grain output what is the grain throughput capacity grain straw output combine capacity so everything is reported so for to ascertain the quality of work we are basically uh, calculating the losses like what is the header losses or sometimes it is also called as shattering loss so what is the level of grain breakage extra worker loss sieve losses total collectible losses to non collectible losses what is the total processing loss what is the threshing efficiency and cleaning efficiency so i would like to inform you that now we have minimum performance standards in which so these are the minimum performance the uh, combined harvester is supposed to meet so what is the maximum if the declaration is uh, given by a manufacturer it should not be more than plus or minus of the declared value so uh, for specific com- uh, fuel consumption it should not be more than 5% of the declared value so backup torque should not be less than 7% of the it's a requirement basically 7% should not be less than 7% so maximum operating temperature so the engine oil whatever the declaration is given by the uh, manufacturer it should not exceed that value so these are the brake performance it's the mechanical performance uh, vibration the vibration should not be more than 150 microns at the different points so this is air cleaner oil pullover uh, test it should not be more than 0.2% for uh, 
for noise at bystander position it should not be more than 88 decibel for operator ear it should not be more than 98 uh, decibel so these are some of the discord limits which are uh, we basically measure the how much wear and tear has happened and accordingly we uh, give the compliance report so this field performance basically it's one of the important uh, evaluation which is we are concerned about to prevent the loss and ascertain the quality of the combined harvester we conduct this evaluation so if the average processing losses for wheat crop it should not be more than 3% and for rice and rice or paddy it should not be more than 4% so if it is more than these uh, limits then the combined harvester is supposed to have failed threshing efficiency should be greater than 98% for wheat and paddy cleaning efficiency should be more than 96% for wheat and paddy for grams and for soybean soybean also we have uh, some codes grain breakage should be less than 2.5% and for non collectible losses should be less than 2.5% it's the the overall limits should not be the average processing loss more should not be more than 3% so these are the safety requirements so that uh, the operator is safe and the uh, person who is standing to the nearby places are also safe so guards against all moving parts lighting arrangement grain tank cover spark cluster stone trap before concave so that the threshing me me mechanism threshing cylinder is safe from if the stone enters inside the concave rear view mirror, mirror firing fire extinguisher slip clutches so these have been added recently anti slip surfaces working clearance around the controls labeling of controls and gauges we have adopted from the international standards so of course we are also concerned about the material of constru construction of different critical components like a knife guard knife blades so it should comply with the different codes breakdown of course the critical there should not be any critical breakdown when we conduct the testing for during the entire 50 hours so major not more than two or neither of them should be repetitive in nature minor not more than five and the frequency of each should not be more than two total breakdown in no case total number of breakdowns exceed five so these are the requirements as per our codes and accordingly we give the compliance report thank you very much uh, for giving me the chance to present my thank you dr mukesh jain uh, for a very uh, interesting presentation uh, i think outlining the the range of uh, tests uh, performed and uh, you know the the tolerance uh, limits uh, so uh, uh, with this uh, we will move on to the uh, third presentation uh, of uh, this uh, session uh, from the republic of korea so i'll call upon uh, dr seung lim jong from the Korea Agriculture Technology Promotion Agency to please uh, give his presentation. So you have uh, 15 minutes, uh, Dr. Jiang. OK. No, no, no. no. We, we are able to share from our side, Dr. Jiang, so you could go ahead. OK, OK. Uh, hello everyone. My name is Zhang from Korea. Nice to see you. Uh, the overview of Korean test code for combined harvest. Let's please. Okay. Uh, this is uh, the contents of uh, test method for uh, combined uh, Korean test method for combined harvesters. Uh, let me tell uh, these items uh, in order. Next, please. At first, uh, uh, in my country, uh, major agricultural machinery, including combined harvesters, should pass 
our national test before sold in domestic market for uh, our farmers. And uh, uh, the scope of uh, test method um, covers uh, test procedure and requirement for self propelled head feed. and the uh, whole feeding time combined harvesters. And the number two, terminology. The terminology is Next, please. Uh, John, perhaps you may like to turn off your camera. Uh, so that we can hear your audio more clearly. OK, I see. Number three, uh, checking of uh, specifications uh, is for ve verifying the mechanism, dimensions, materials and uh, accessories uh, of uh, the combined harvest. Uh, following is the Example of the items usually we check for the test. Uh, for example, dimensions and stressing and the separating system, like this. And this slide, please. We all say good, uh, etc. Let's try, please. Let's try, please. Sorry. S sorry. Uh, Dr. Jung, if, uh, if you'd like us to switch the slide, please let us know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, slide number six. Uh, no, no, no. Um, slide number six, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, general conditions for field test. Uh, as our national test code is mandatory, uh, we test the combined uh, in mm, good conditions. Uh, we test uh, with the crops uh, in good conditions. Uh, and also, uh, field will be fairly flat and the atmosphere will be a preferable and the moisture Next slide, please. Let's try number seven. Sorry. For the test, uh, as you can see uh, in the right side, uh, the length of uh, uh, test run has three sections. Uh, okay, can you hear me? Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Jiang, we can hear you. Uh, please okay. go ahead. Okay. Next, please. Uh, it's just a uh, typical materials floor in combined harvest, uh, as you may know well already. So let me skip it. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah. uh, in order to collect uh, catch, uh, catches, uh, uh, before harvesting, uh, we remove pre-harvest losses in the 
uh, head loss test section for measuring uh, head loss in advance. And uh, when testing, uh, the operator uh, drives ground speed constantly with the uh, stirrable height uh, below 10 centimeters, like a Russian case. Uh, and uh, the dust uh, man uh, catches a, a whole straw or outlet and the sieve outlet separately, continuously without interruption. And uh, uh, during this catch process, uh, uh, speed checker uh, measures the uh, ground speed. Uh, and uh, lastly, the supervisor. The supervisor uh, uh, checks the all machines' behaviors and also uh, controls the safety first. And next slide, please. Uh, at uh, uh, collect, uh, collecting catches, uh, uh, we separate head loss and we clean and separate losses in the catches. Uh, the first one uh, for head loss, we gather uh, grains in three each loss test area. Mm. And uh, 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 regarding the uh, second one, loss in sieve uh, catch, we gather the uh, loose gains from the sieve catch and we separate uh, rice, barley, and bean grains in uh, head or rusks. And the last one. Mm, uh, is uh, as we check the losses from straw, uh, you can see uh, index right, please. This is a kind of uh, losses, and it's uh, uh, uh catchy positions. Uh, for the first, for the first uh, head loss, uh. Uh, every grain uh, in the ground is collected, even if uh, it is in head or uh, uncut. But uh, we don't collect uh, uh, uncut lower heads, which is below the uh, cut knife. And next, the second one for uh, uh, for unstress loss. Uh, we collect uh, 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 rice grain in straw uh, only when it is assured that the grain has passed the stressing drum. Uh, and uh, for the rest, the unclean um, losses, we collect uh, only loose grains only. Next slide, please. After collecting losses, uh, uh, we calculate the total weight of grains from measured section by summing up all the harvest grains and the lost grains. And uh, uh, we calculate uh, uh, total loss percentage like this. Next slide, please. Uh, in addition mm, mm, to uh, before said grain losses, we measure the uh, weight of harvest grains and uh, test the moist contents. Uh, and we uh, sample around uh, 300 gram. Uh, and then uh, we sort the sample uh, by a damaged grain. And, and also uh, uh, impurities. Next slide, please. In addition to the uh, quality uh, work, 
quality test, uh, we test the uh, uh, rate of work test. Uh, the purpose is uh, to test uh, uh, field work rates, mean ground speed, and the machine behaviors, and the pure consumption, etc., uh, in continuous uh, harvesting. Uh, during um, the test, uh, uh, the combine should be operated at speed which can attain the best work rates uh, in the size of field uh, larger than. Uh, 20 acres. Uh, when harvesting, uh, work rates and the machine behaviors, etc., are uh, tested as follows. Next slide, please. Uh, during the work rate test, uh, we also check ground speed and fuel consumption and the storable height and machine behaviors and damaged the grain uh, uh, like uh, 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 quality of uh, work test work test case next slide please uh, according to our test code uh, uh, we also test uh, the uh, adaptability Uh, as you can see, we check the adaptability of uh, radar lights uh, in the four directions of uh, uh, lateral left and lateral right, forward and backward directions. Next slide, please. And we test uh, uh, almost every engine um, attached to agricultural machinery, including uh, combined harvests, of course, uh, according to our engine test code, uh, almost like uh, prior India's case. Uh, and in addition, especially uh, engine-related output above uh, 19 kilowatt requires stage 5 emission certificates in Korea. Next slide, please. And we also check uh, the uh, convenience for operator. We, uh, we check the easy over access and operation of controls, adjustments, and maintenance and the cleaning, etc. And also, uh, we performed no, uh, noise level tests uh, at the driving positions when harvesting in maximum ground speed. Let's try it, please. And lastly, uh, we check and uh, test the safety requirements uh, for combined harvester. Uh, the cut bar sh uh, shall not be operated without the operation of stressing parts. And for uh, head feeding time, especially uh, emergency stuff shall be located uh, uh, near the stressing input parts. And uh, uh, we check automatic power cut off functions when closed and uh, warning functions when tank full and crowd also. Uh, and also uh, we test uh, the uh, overturning angles uh, on the tilt table methods. Okay, next slide please. Okay, thank you so much for your attention. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jiang, for the, the presentation. Uh, again, a, a very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, and uh, I think a, a lot of uh, key features highlighted for, uh, uh, you know, for addressing the aspect of uh, uh, minimizing food loss and uh, for enhancing the, the safety uh, aspect of the machinery. So I would like to um, uh, invite uh, Mr. Uh, Eduard Perov from the Russian Association of Testing of Agricultural Machinery and uh, Technology uh, to please uh, take us through uh, his, his presentation. So uh, over to you, uh, Mr. Uh, Eduard Perov. Good evening, 
Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Согласно заявленной программе сегодняшнего дня, вашему вниманию будет представлено две презентации. We have two presentations for our meeting. Первое направление – сценарий проведения полевого опыта, методика определения основных показателей, характеризующих эффективность комбайна. The first topic of our speech is a practical seminar and on agrotechnical evaluation of combine harvesters. И второе направление – перечень параметров, определяемых при испытаниях в рамках обеспечения безопасности конструкции комбайна. And the next topic will be about safety, uh, ergonomic design of the combine. We are ready to start. Am I right? Sure. Okay. Uh, choosing a combined harvester, the consumer is interested in the possibilities of the combined harvester, its comfort and expenses for the maintenance of the machine. At first, the capabilities of the combine are determined by its performance and associated costs, while the quality of work has got strict requirements regulated by standards. These standards are valid in the Russian Federation. Next slide, please. Next slide. Oh. Okay, we are uh, we're trying to scroll next to slide. the next slide. Uh, please mm -hmm. give us a moment. Yes. Okay, very good. Uh, every combined harvester produced in the Russian Federation must meet these standards. In order to determine the quality and the cost of work associated with harvesting, an agrotechnical assessment is carried out according to the methodology regulated by standards. Uh, conditions for field tests. The first is the operational and technological evaluation of the combine is carried out on the grain crop prevailing in the zone, uh, for example, winter wheat. It is done by the predominant method of harvesting in the zone, for example, directed harvesting. The next uh, is determination of the quality based on the results of the adjustment on the mode and the control shift are carried out on the same field, on the same plot. Characteristics of the vegetation cover of the grain field before harvesting in terms of yield, contamination, moisture content of grain and straw, uh, the inclination of cereal plants by the stem to the ground, the uh, ratio of grain uh, weight uh, to straw weight, the mass of 1,000 grains must meet the requirements of standards called combined harvesters, appointment indicators, general requirements. Indicators of test conditions are determined according to standards. For test, uh, a field is selected. The field must meet the requirements of standards. The breakdown of the field is performed. Uh, mowing at a distance of uh, 50 meters from the edges, a forest belt, road. Uh, plots are marked out for setting up, evaluation and control shift due to the adapted cultivation technology in the zone. Mowing uh, is done along the vegetation cover of the grain field from the passage of the sprayer if the technolog technological paths are in the presence. If the technological packs are in the absence, movement is done across the vegetation cover of the grain field, blowing of fire prevention strips. The characteristics of the harvested crop and field are determined. Next slide, please. Slide number three, please. Okay, thank you. Initial requirements for the combine. The harvester must be running and adjusted according to the operating instructions. The reaper of the harvester is adjusted to a cut. Its height is 10 centimeters. In fact, it shouldn't exceed uh, 15 centimeters. When harvesters are compared, they are equipped with reapers of the same width. 
the shredder and spreader are switched off for the period of the tests. If technical capabilities allow, they are dismantled so straw and chaff are stacked in a roll when coming out of the threshing machine. For evaluation, the setup and adjustment of the combine is carried out on the mode of maximum productivity. It is done by representatives of the manufacturer or independently, according to the instructions or settings in the mode of economic operation. The following conditions are met. Grain loses at the combined threshing machine no more than 1.5%. Grain loses at the reaper no more than 0.5%. Grain crushing no more than 2%. The content of wheat admixture in the grain mass of the hopper no more than 2%. Next slide, please. Slide number five, please. Okay, thank you. Agrotechnical assessment, determination of nominal performance. In order to determine the operating mode and nominal performance of the combine, sampling is carried out before the control shift. The length of the accounting plot is not less than 100 meter. The combined harvester is equipped with samplers, drives up to the test plot, and performs a working step. With the steady mode of operation of the combine, samples are taken at least three times at each loading mode. Next slide, please. The test determines the speed of movement of the combine, the width of the reaper's grip, the height of the cut, the mass of the grain collected during the test, grain loses behind the threshing machine, grain loses behind the reaper, grain crushing, and the content of the wheat admixture in the grain mass of the hopper. Next slide, please. Control shift. The control shift is carried out on a certain zone of the field with an approximately the same yield over the square. The zone is determined by the duration of the control shift for at least eight hours. The compared combines of the same class in terms of throughput and type, classical or rotary, work side by side. The assessment is carried out on the already selected adjustments of reapers at a speed corresponding to the received nominal performance. Data entered in the test log. During the control shift, the mode of operation of the combine is monitored according to the following indicators. The speed of movement of the combine, the height of the cut, and adjustments. To determine the performance, fuel consumption and coefficients characterizing all elements of the shift time. A continuous chrono chronography of the working time of the combine is carried out, recording all operations of the control shift in the chronocut. Fuel consumption during the control shift is determined by the refilling method. Before the start of the control sheet, the tank of the combine is filled completely up to a certain mark. It is done on a leveled horizontal section. The amount of fuel determines the gross fuel consumption during the control shift. After milling of each hopper by a combine harvester, the grain is loaded from the hopper and weighed. During the control shift, the harvester must work with the maximum possible width of the reaper. Uh, during the control shift, the following indicators of the quality of the technological process are determined. Total grain loses behind the combine, grain crushing, 
the content of the wheat admixture on the hopper grain, the height of the cut. To determine the total losses behind the combined during the control shift, samples are taken in five-fold repetition according to the standard. The harvester should work in the mode of laying the byproduct in row. To determine the total losses during the control shift, samples are taken using a sampling frame or an elastic band. In order to determine the losses behind the reaper, frames made of a twine are used. They are applied after the passage of the combine to the entire width of the reaper. To analyze the quality of hopper grain, samples are taken from each fully unloaded hopper during the shift. Processing of test results. After testing the combine according to the results of the operational and technological assessment with the determination of quality indicators, field test and control shift, the final processing of the results are carried out. After processing, the test results and the data are do documented. Uh, that's enough for, for the first presentation. And uh, can you share the second one? Presentation about safety and ergonomic design of the combine. Our next presentation, please. Thank you. So we are sharing the next uh, presentation from our side. OK, thank you. OK, thank you. The next topic is uh, safety and the ergonomic design of the combine. Next slide, please. The main determinants in assessing the safety and economics of combined harvester design. Next slide, please. The first point is a transverse static stability angle. Determination of the angle of transverse static stability is carried out with a hydraulic lifting platform using a measuring device. The purpose is to compare the data obtained with the data declared by the manufacturer in the technical documentation. The second point is load on the steered wheels. It is determined by the use of a scales undergoing certification, combined in a machine with an adapter. Uh, the third point is the efficiency of the braking systems. The aim is to determine the efficiency of service and the parking brakes in accordance with existing procedures and to compare the data with established standards. When measuring, determine the braking distance and the maximum speed of the combine. Next slide, please. Number four. Slide number two. Um, the next is elimination. Elimination is defined on the side with a grid marked out according to the procedures. The combine is set up in accordance with the established and current methods for measuring a device lux meter is used. Uh, installation of lighting and light uh, signaling devices. Inspection and uh, geometrical measuring are performed according to the normative technical documentation. Next slide, please. Number six, cabin design. By means of the method of examination and linear measurements in accordance with the requirement of GOST, the location of the control's emergency exits door openings 
in a dimensions of the cabin and the dimensions of the seat are determined. Number seven, cabin equipment. The method of inspection and testing in accordance with the technical documentation to determine the equipment of the cabin. The presence of basic components for cabin equipment established by GOST is an integral part of the requirements. Next slide, please. Means of access to the workplace. The method of inspection and measurement in accordance with current regulations establishes the basic requirements for means of access to the workplace. The presence of stairs, handrails, uh, handrails, platforms, free access to the operator seat shall be determined and the location of this means of access shall be measured. Design of system assemblies and aggregates. Check the structure of systems, components and assemblies of the harvester by means of inspection in accordance with technical documentation. Obtain data are compared with the established current requirements. Next slide, please. Can you show us? Mm -hmm, thank you. Sound noise level at operator's workplace. Determined by measuring equipment, combined harvester with adaptive part. Working tools are switched on. Obtained data is compared with established indicators of normative and technical documentation. Parameters of vibration at the operator's workplace. To determine this parameter, a measuring device is used. Measurements are taken while the harvester is performing the technological operation. The purpose is to get the data and compare it with the existing standards. Steering will play. Determined with a gauge, the combined harvester is stationary with the steering wheels in a straight line. Obtained data are compared with the established indicators of the technical documentation. Overpressure in the operator's cabin. Determined using a measuring device. Obtained data is compared with the established indicators, uh, normative and te technical documentation. Uh, next slide, please. Resistance forces to movement of controls and adjustments. Determined by means of a measuring device, measurement of the resistance force of the steering wheel movement is done with the combined moving with a certain speed and um, co curvilinear trajectory. The direct force of the controls is measured in place with the engine running. The purpose is to obtain data and compare it with the established current standards. Parameters of the microclimate climate in the cabin and test conditions. The microclimate parameters and test conditions are determined by means of a measuring device. Temperature, relative humidity, air velocity, and temperature of the interior surface of the cap shall be checked when the harvester is in operation. The test conditions are determined in accordance with the technical documentation. The data obtained are compared with the current standards. Determination of dust content in the air of the working area. The control is carried out by measuring method in accordance with technical documentation. To determine this parameter, the measuring device is used. Measurements are made with the harvester is in operation. The data obtain, obtained are compared with the current standards. And that's all for today. Thank you for your attention. Uh Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Edward uh, Perov and uh, uh, our, our team from the Russian Association 
of testing of agriculture machine and technology. So uh, I think a very comprehensive presentation. Uh, we've heard uh, I think lots of uh, good features uh, and uh, and and uh, uh, components of the of, of the test that are being conducted. Uh, and uh, I think really goes on to uh, to show uh, the the diversity uh, uh, at, as well as at the same time, you know, the extent of uniformity that that we have uh, you know, in, in the testing codes from across the region. So uh, we we are running uh, a bit behind schedule, so um, maybe I'll just uh, hand over back to uh, to Sandro for uh, taking us the, through the next uh, session uh, on uh, which which will be uh, on the aspect of uh, development of national codes and uh, testing procedures. So uh, Sandro, uh, over to you, please, for the next session. Thank you very much. Uh, congratulations to the speakers. The presentations have been very interesting. We have a lot of information for developing the codes. So time is running fast, as you said before, and uh, I would like to introduce the next uh, three speakers and uh, give the word first to the representative of the Philippines, uh, Ms. Fatima Joy Raitana from the Agricultural Machinery Testing and Evaluation Center. Please. Uh, hello, everyone. So good day. So uh, can you hear me? So am I loud and clear? Yes, so, very uh, clearly. Yeah, so I will be uh, fast facing my presentation since we are very <laughs> late. So uh, I am uh, again, I am engineer Fatima Joy J. Reitana of the test engineer from the Agriculture and Machinery Testing and Evaluation Center, AMTEC of the UP, UPLB, so University of the Philippines, Los Banos. So AMTEC is the premier and reference testing center of agriculture and fisheries machinery in the Philippines. So in the creation of the standard, here in the Philippines, so uh, the DA BAF, so this is the Bureau of Agriculture and Fishery Standards of the Department of Agriculture is the one mandated to develop national standards for agriculture fishery machinery. And AMTEC is part of the technical working group in the development of the national standards. So presently, we both have Philippine national standards for rice and corn combined har harvesters because these are two of our staple products here in the Philippines. Okay, so this is, let me share it to you. So we have uh, here in the Philippines for agriculture machinery standards. So we have two parts. So one is for the specifications and one is for the methods of test. So under the specifications, this is where you will, uh, this will serve as your guide in the minimum performance requirements, manufacturing requirements as stated in the standards. Okay, so as per AFMEC law here in the Philippines, um, all of the, all of the tested combined harvesters, okay, or agriculture machinery shall pass all the all the requirements stated in our standards. Okay, so this let me share it to you. This is the actual screenshot of our Philippine national standard. So this one is for the agriculture machinery rice combined harvester specifications. Then we have the forward, okay. And then followed by the scope of the standard and the reference. So basically, um, uh, Sir Mark instructed me so to discuss how we are uh, we you how we develop our standards. So normally during standard development, we always refer to available international standards. So as reference, and during the TWG uh, discussion. Okay, we will discuss is the if the performance parameters indicated in the ISO and the methods of test is applicable here in the Philippines. So in this case, for the agriculture, uh, for the standard for rice combined harvester, we use ISO 4254 and 4253. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, the technical means for ensuring safety and operator seating accommodation. Okay, as reference for our standard for rice combined. Okay, and other uh, other standards ref, uh, such as uh, operator's manual or rollover protective structures, bots and nuts, engineer materials, and the methods of tests. Actually, all our all of our existing national standards are also uh, using ISO as reference in the development of those standards. Okay, so so this is the uh, uh, screenshot of the methods of test for the rice combine. 
Okay, this is the contents, the scope, preference, definition, general condition. So, by the way, for all of our existing agricultural st uh, machinery standards, all of the contents are the same. And for both uh, specifications and methods of test, so they have the we all we already have a format that we follow. And almost all of the minimum requirements for fabrication are almost the same. So I will discuss. Uh, so I will just discuss for uh, corn combine specifically because all, almost all the parameters stated in rice combine and corn combine is the same. Okay. So for the scope, yes. Yeah, so if you can see, so for the reference, so uh, these are all uh, the references we use the existing standards, Philippine national standards, as reference in the methods of test. Okay, so uh, um, in the creation of the rice combine harvesters, actually we use uh, the agricultural machinery standard for rice reaper because we already have and mechanical rice treasure because we already have those standards before prior to the drafting of the rice combine harvesters. So all of the methods of test, particularly the lab analysis and the rice rice reaper field testing of the rice reaper all of the methods of test were lifted from the said standards in the Philippines. Okay, so this is the specific standard for the corn combine harvester. So for the specifications, okay, so um, by the way, uh, just a trivia here in the standards that we use in the Philippines, if it states that it is shall, it, it, means, it means that the requirement is mandatory. But if it says that should, okay, so it means that it is recommended, not a, a, not a mandatory not uh, not a requirement okay so it's just recommended by the standard okay so uh so this one so of course the different specifications always contains the different definition of the terms using the standard followed by the classification so for this one for the uh, to uh, corn combine harvester so we have three classifications based on the type of traction uh types of unloading and Okay, so these are the two types and uh, based on the design, so one is the typical corn combine harvester and the other one is the modified. So because this um, type of corn combine harvester is already existing here in the market and being procured by our government to be given to our farmer, uh, farmer associations. Okay, so this type of um, more prominent because you can just uh, adjust the, you can just adjust the real assembly and the threshing assem uh, shelling assembly for it to be uh, used in the, to be used in, and con counted as rice combined harvester. So we call them multi-crop combi multi combined harvesters. So this is very prominent. Then we have also the common parts and components of the corn combined harvesters. And uh, so then next is the general fabrication requirements. So for the general fabrication requirements, it commonly lists the, the different type of uh, materials to be to be used for each specific component. So for example, um, for the real assembly and pickup times, uh, it shall be made of stainless steel, uh, steel alloys, or any abrasion resistant coated material. So it always specifies, so this one which it says shall, so it's mandatory. Okay, so uh, we focus also on the on the serrated edge of the cutting knife and uh, the and hardness of the cutting knife. So there are specific uh, requirements for them and bolts and nuts. Okay, for and we also have different specifications for other components like a header and feed table, weeding unit, uh, shelling unit. Okay, so separating unit, uh, cleaning unit. Uh, cob stock handling unit and kernel handling unit. Okay, and lastly, we also have a uh, seat operator seat requirements. So as mentioned earlier, uh, this uh, the requirements for operator seats and control locations are related to the seat index point SIP should conform shall conform to PAS 139 2004 and PAS 139 2004 is also um, lifted from ISO. So ISO is also one of its references. Okay, so since the Philippines in here in the Philippines is a tropical country, the seat cover should be uh, heat insulated is recommendatory. So also one of the safety safety features of the machine and for protective guards or screen located at the front of the operator and side of the header shall be provided. Okay, so for under safety workmanship and finish, 
So uh, we just focus on the safety requirements. So it says it says that safety requirements shall conform to ISO 4254, so technical means of ensuring safety. And the warning notices shall be provided in accordance to PAS 101-2000. And then for the corn combine, so it focuses more on the shall be treated with slow moving vehicles. If you can see on the presentation, we have a uh, uh, the exact dimension of the slow moving uh, vehicle emblem that should be uh, installed at the rear of the combine. And then uh, head and tail light shall be provided and also on the noise level uh, emitted by the machine. So we, uh, we take the noise level at the air operator's ear, okay, and it should conform with uh, occupational safety and health standard or OSHA. So if you can see on the table on the right side, so um, it says that, for example, if the, re if the decibel level is at 92 dBA, okay, the recommended uh, maximum duration of hours is up to six hours per day only. So if you will limit, uh, so up to be considered a safety threshold. So for additional, if that, if during the test we recorded a if more than 95 decibel levels is recorded at the noise noise of uh, ear level of the noise no, uh, ear level of the operator okay uh, ear protective device shall be provided oh. so that's one of the requirements and lastly of course the rotating part shall be dynamically balanced and all moving parts shall be provided with safety features in accordance with PAS 101-2000. So all of the other uh, workmanship and finish uh, from 6 to 9 are all the same in almost uh, all, all of standards. So should be free from manufacturing defects, free from rust, um, always coated with anti-corrosive paint and free from sharp edges and surfaces that may injure the operator. So we just focus more on the noise level and the, uh, the installation of uh, safety markings. Okay, so for the performance requirement, so this is all the performance requirements that the uh, corn combine harvester, uh, that he, if the tested corn combine harvester should, should pass the prescribed performance requirement, for example, for the maximum uh, allowable harvesting loss is up to 3% only. And the separation loss is up to 1.5%. Uh, and shell loss is 0.5%. So uh, in corn combined harvester, we only consider three losses. So um, actually, it almost same with that with the way um, uh, from the Korea, they, they get their, uh, how they measure, collect their samples, it's almost the same because we also consider uh, ISO standards okay so this is our these are the ta the three losses that we consider then we have a total grain loss of maximum of two percent and for the purity of the output it should be uh the minimum should be at least 75 percent the mechanically damaged kernel uh should have an allowable up to three percent only and the net crack kernel should be up to five percent only Okay, so these are the definitions. Uh, actually, I just combined them. Okay, these are all enlisted in our standard. So, um, if in an ISO and uh, if a reference standard normally has uh, their specific criteria during the uh, specification, uh, during the drafting process, okay, the DWG will discuss and convene if the stated initial values indicated in ISO or other methods of test is uh, applicable to the Philippine setting. So they will uh, they will have a series of technical working group meetings to discuss that and then additional field tests may be required to ensure that the that the this criteria shall satisfy the Philippine setting. Okay, so uh, uh, field testing and data collection is very essential during the creation of the no, draft standard. And of course, when the final draft, uh, when the initial draft has been completed, we have initial values for this performance data. The technical working draft will be uh, presented in a series of public consultation meetings. Okay, so this is um, in which all of the, uh, the different uh, sectors or stakeholders of the machine so includes the government the um, manufacturers uh, distributors okay importers and the end users uh, shall have a say on the standards okay if if we can um, this is to ensure that their uh, insights or comments will be addressed at least in the in the draft 
Okay, so for the methods of test, this is the part two of the standards. Okay, so we compute also for the effective field capacity, the theoretical field capacity, field efficiency, potential yield, and fuel consumption. If you can, um, if you can uh, check, uh, we only conduct field testing of um, corn combine harvester. So we do, uh, we do not conduct laboratory tests aside from the laboratory analysis of the output samples. Okay, so um, we are very dependent on the field and uh, crop conditions. So that's why during the actual test, we uh, we set some minimum requirements. Like for example, in our standards, we consider at least 1,000 square meters for one trial. And we have and we require three test plots for that for one specific uh, testing. Okay, so these are the formulas. Of this, the formulas are already indicated in the annex part of the of the standard so i will not discuss it because you already discussed by later <laughs> okay so the um the methods of test also uh considers the general condition of test and inspection such as how 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 is the corn combined harvester to be tested to be selected what is the role of the test applicant the role of the test applicant's representative so and also guidelines on the suspension and termination of tests the test area requirements and the uh, uh, crop requirements. So in our case in the Philippines, uh, to ensure that we can compare the variable data, uh, corn plant shall be locally grown and shall be ready for harvesting and at 28% moisture content. So that is the maximum, okay? And then on the methods of this, we also uh, list that as instruments needed for the testing of the corn combine harvester, same with the rice combine harvester. So these are all for field tests, uh, instruments to be used in the field test, so that uh, the green, um, the equipment to be used in the laboratory is also stated in our uh, standard. And uh, we also have guidelines. So this is just the summaries on what to do on before performance tests. So of course you perform specific uh, verification of the specifications of the corn combine. So normally includes the overall dimensions of the unit and the machine condition and the engine uh, brand model serial number. Okay, the next, the performance test. So how to conduct the test, what to do during the test operation. As I said, this is a field testing only. So it's just a summarize of what we do. So we get the speed, the area, the noise level, and we collect samples. And we also uh, record the total operating time, turning time, uh, fuel time, okay? and so this one just a guide and the after performance test so of course we also collect samples before and after to ensure that there is no uh, unshelled kernels in the field and then we also then after the test we perform uh, all the collected samples will be uh, submitted to our green laboratory analysis and the uh, moisture content uh, mechanical uh, mechanical damage kernels net crack kernels purity of the output and losses will be uh, will be based on the laboratory analysis of samples. Okay, so after all the, uh, after computing all the required um, measurements, then the test results will be uh, reflected in a test report. So this is the content of the test report. Okay, so we have the title, the summary, purpose, scope of test, methods of test, description of the machine, results, observations, and name signatures of test engineer. So this is a sample of our actual uh, test report. So a modified um, corn combine harvester. So, ayan. So I, I hope uh, everyone, uh, thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, feel free to chat in our chat box. So thank you, Po. Thank you so thank much, you. Very clear and uh, very, you focus uh, very important points as the, uh, the use of standards and so on and so on. Uh, I think we have short of time. We are running short of time, so maybe we take some time at the end for questions. And uh, I will give the word to Dr. Alicia for her presentation. She's from the Farm Mechanization Research Center in uh, Sri Lanka. Please, Alicia, the word to you. Thank you, Dr. Sandro. David, could you please share my presentation from your side? Or 
Are you going Thank to you. allow me to share? Okay. It's okay now? Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just for the uh, time being, I will uh, accelerate my presentation. Um, actually, by, by its meaning, the combined harvester is a machine that uh, doing three operations combinedly, the reaping, threshing, and cleaning of uh, cultivated uh, cereal crops in a single operation. In Sri Lanka, uh, we have three major types of combined harvesters that are currently used in uh, crop cultivation. Uh, the first type is the self-propelled wheel type uh, combined harvesters and the second type is the self-propelled the track type one and the third type is the tractor mounted ones. Normally the self-propelled wheel type combined harvesters are excellent for farms with the uh, hard soil, especially in uh, upland crop uh, harvesting like uh, maize harvesting. And the second one type is the track type uh, combined harvesters. Uh, these are fitted with uh, tracks instead of wheels. They are very efficient and uh, very productive in areas where the wheels are likely to get uh, bogged down. And the track combined harvesters, uh, harvesters are commonly used in uh, harvesting rice in Sri Lanka, especially in uh, wetland uh, cultivations. The third type is the tractor mounted type. Uh, these tractors are driven by the tractors that are mounted on top of the uh, combined harvester. Uh, the speciality of this type of combined harvesters are in during off seasons, uh, the owner can uh, bring down the tractor and set with the uh, tires and he, he can use the tractor in off season uh, activities. Uh, according to the feeding type, there are another two classifications uh, we can see in Sri Lanka, the full feeding type and head feeding type, but considering the cropping conditions and the cr cropping varieties uh, in uh, Sri Lankan rice cultivations. Uh, the most appropriate mechanization method for harvesting paddy is the full feeding type and also the track type combined harvesters for Sri Lanka. So without uh, going for laboratory testing or the field testing, uh, we considering the suitability, we can uh, recommend the full feeding type uh, track mount uh, combined harvesters for Sri Lankan uh, rice harvesting activities. Uh, apart from that, for the hilly areas where the large combined harvesters cannot move, we can recommend the mini combined harvesters, uh, which are um, self-propelled and some are uh, coupled with uh, two wheel tractors. When we are going for testing, uh, not only the uh, combined harvester, but also the field conditions and the crop conditions should be uh, correct for the uh, correct performance evaluation. Uh, if we consider the field conditions, uh, we are uh, taking the plot size that should be minimum. The length of uh, 30 meters length should be there to take the readings and the size of the field should be at least that should be half of a uh, hectare. Uh, to have a proper field capacity because when we are taking the field capacity, we have to take the uh, productive turning time and the non-productive time for the total time to calculate the field capacity. If the field size is too small, then the um, non-productive time for turning and uh, uh, handling is uh, increasing. So therefore, the for, for proper handling, uh, the machinery should be the field should be at least uh, half an uh, hectare of uh, size should be there and the soil moisture content is also very much important because it's work, work as the lubricant in between soil particles uh, under heavy pressure equipment like combined harvesters so it is recommended to drain the fields two weeks before harvesting and for testing purposes uh, we use the corn index method to uh, evaluate the soil condition the soil should be dry enough uh, that the corn index should be in between three to five kilograms uh, per square centimeter uh, reading should be there. And if we consider the, uh, the cropping conditions for uh, proper harvesting, the grain moisture normally for paddy, uh, storing the paddy that should be in between 13 to 15 uh, percent of moisture. But if we dry the paddy un uh, until that level, uh, 
it may cause a lot of uh, shuttering from the uh, head end and then that leads to um, some losses. So the proper uh, grain moisture level for harvesting with combined harvesters is 20 to 25 uh, of the moisture. So we are using that equipments to uh, measure the uh, moisture content. And then the crop density, crop planting method, crop uh, height, the cutting height and standing crop angle and the success probability for shuttering. Those are uh, effect on the performance of a combined harvester. So normally we are recording these values and uh, uh, we can still adjust the combined harvester according to the uh, conditions of the field. For example, if the crop density is too low, then we can uh, have the uh, more speed and the more real speed to avoid the idling of uh, threshing drum. And if the crop, crop density is too high, then um, it will, if, if you operate the machine in uh, high speeds, then it will lead to clog the uh, crop inside the uh, threshing drum and that lead, this will lead to uh, give more unthresh losses. So the condition should be maintained uh, properly before doing the testing. And then the uh, operator. The operator should uh, teach enough uh, to select the suitable uh, operating gear, gear uh, operating directions and the cutting speed and cutting height. In Sri Lanka, we have farm mechanization training center. They are conducting a comprehensive uh, training programs for uh, combined harvester operators. So it is recommended in Sri Lanka to use uh, the licensed person to operate combined harvesters uh, when we are harvesting paddy in um, paddy fields. We are measuring the losses associated with combined harvesters. Uh, first one is the grain damages uh, and then head losses, unthresh losses, separating losses and cleaning losses. To calculate the losses, we are taking 30 meter length uh, uh, mulching, uh, not mulching, it's called um, a ground sheet to collect the uh, disposals from the combined harvester. And we are um, calculating each one of the uh, losses separately, the header losses from the uh, gathering side. And from the processing side, there are unthreshed losses, separation losses, and cleaning losses are there. So all the losses uh, we are uh, taking that means uh, two meter uh, cutter ball uh, length and th 30 meter uh, length and width. So altogether 60 square meter uh, output from the harvest we are taking and uh, a team should be there to uh, calculate the uh, losses. For grain damages, we use uh, the seed certification section of the Department of Agriculture to get the certification from them, the damage percentages. If the losses are high, still uh, we have some adjustments in the combined harvesters. Uh, so we can adjust the reel height and the cutter bar height and uh, the distance forward from the cutter bar to the reel. Those uh, uh, adjustments are there in the combined harvesters to uh, reduce the head losses. And for unthresh losses, it's related to the uh, threshing section of the uh, combined harvester. So the pro proper maintenance and the uh, drum adjustments and drum speed adjustments we can do if threshing losses are uh, high and also the separation losses. Uh, in Sri Lanka, when we are recommending a combined harvester, total losses should be less than 3%. That is our recommendation. Uh, after performance evaluation and then we are going for a safety test. So the sound and vibration test, dust emission, we are uh, checking uh, what kind of dust is there and uh, what, what is the area that affect by the uh, dust emission and general inspection for guards and covers, the security alarms and warning indicators. We are checking those parameters. And afterwards, we are conducting a durability test for combined harvesters to detect failures and uh, identify potential weaknesses of the machine. Uh, because always we are importing combined harvesters from other countries. So the machine should be uh, suitable for the local operating conditions. So therefore, we are conducting 300 working hours endurance test. Normally, in research fields, it will take uh, two consecutive uh, harvesting uh, seasons to complete the uh, testing of combined harvesters. So that's the procedure uh, we are following and after uh, doing all the tests uh, we are issuing uh, 
comprehensive test report uh, for the machinery. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You have been very clear and uh, I think it's a very good uh, information for the, as a testing procedure because you take in account a lot of important points. So time is running fast and uh, I got a message to be quick. So I kindly ask uh, Yoko Pitoyo and Bayu Satya Litananda from the Indonesian Center of Agricultural Engineering Research and Development to take the floor with the presentation, please. Okay, this my turn. Yeah. Yes, my we can hear. My voice is clear. Everything is clear, please. Okay, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Sandro, and for Chisem. Uh, actually, this is not my time, but uh, due to the team from Indonesia, there were two person is already choose and join for develop the code coordinated by Chisem as TWG. TWG. One is Mr. Iqbal and second is Mr. Wahyu, but instead of them, I just, yeah, to accompany them. So that why this afternoon in the short time, I will present about the standard national Indonesia for the combined harvester. So I pro properly that uh, this is the standard of combined harvester in Indonesia that uh, there are three categories. There are A, B, C. This is on the power available on on that machine. Okay, next. Yeah, I think that uh, this is the the reason why that in Indonesia we need the standard of combined because due to the number of due to the number of the combined harvester available in Indonesia actually just start seven years ago the started by initiated by the government <coughs> distribution purchase and then given freely to the farmer so year by year the number is increased but uh, actually there are many other uh, combined in Indonesia, not only mainly for the rice, but also for the corn, because on some part of Indonesia, we are alternate to crop the after rice, we are changing to the corn, so that's why we are also provide the corn combined harvester, and also for the soya bean, soya bean is also the very important crop in Indonesia, because we uh, consume a lot of soybean in Indonesia for the to be processed for the daily food as the protein we call the tempe. So that's why we are imported a lot of soybean. So we need to develop sufficient of soybean. So the number is quite numerous, but uh, I don't have yet the number of combine purchased by retail or farmer itself, but uh, the guessing it can be 50,000 until right now. The number, I think the higher than, than government purchasing. So this is the why the, the demand of the combine in Indonesia is year by year is increased. So next, this is the some many standard in Indonesia. Uh, that consists of the dimension. I think that uh, the story is like this one. Actually, we just follow the the dimension as available on the market in Indonesia, and then we just make a roughly. We don't set the exact dimension or or, or size, but we just follow the the availability on the market. So. This is a still actually the standard is just seven years ago. So 
yeah, year by year we need to evaluate and we need to to improve. It's not only about the dimension, the total uh, overall outermost, but also about the engine. Okay, next. Uh, okay, so this is just part of the dimension and technical specification of body combined harvester. I think this is just the common one, so we just make uh, as follow on the available on the market. So next. And actually this is the about the parameter of some important devices like uh, cutting knife and then cutting heads and screw and also the the size of the treat on the auger but uh, I do not okay next the performance on the field so this is the harvesting it is not harvesting road speed but this is the traveling speed we are <coughs> running on the field the the higher the the, the higher the class of combine, the more speed we are put on the field. So suppose on the peak combine, we can run on the field just the standard is three until six kilometer per hour. And then we put also the capacity of the field, our hectare per hour, that should be minimized is 0.4 for the big one and then 0.15 for the medium one and the 0.1 for the small one hectare per hour. <laughs> so there are many other parameter like uh, uh, efficiency that mean we are compared between the actual uh, field capacity and theoretical field capacity so the actual field capacity is we just measure by the actual size harvested size harvested size divided by time consume and compare with the theoretical field capacity is the calculation from the theoretical speed and and cutting width okay i think this is is no more important so next yeah, this is the <clears throat> related to the what we call another parameter that, uh, but not many, just as uh, ergonomic and also the safety matter. We are focused on two parameter. One is the noise level. We put in Indonesia, the maximum should be 80, uh, 98 decibel and the about the safety matter is all part that uh, on running devices that are close to the operator should be covered and protect well. This is the, the more or less about the requirement of uh, combined harvester standard national Indonesia. But uh, before I close this uh, presentation for the administrator that May I do present uh, share the file by myself? So just please close this one, and then I have some additional. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Wait, wait a minute. I will present my. Uh, okay. Okay. Just just wait a moment, Sandro. Okay, this one. I will. Yeah. Okay, then I will. This is how to. Yes. Can you see? Yeah. Actually, the scope of Standard National Indonesia Combined Investor are consists four parameter. The first is specification and requirement of main component as the second is dimension of main devices and the third one is field performance is cover about capacity losses 
level of damage screen and the last one is about safety there are two parameter noise comfortability coverage of dangerous part so as you are see on the picture uh, this is the category of the big or the largest one of combined investor uh, and this and the lowest one we want to share about the situation in Indonesia because among of around 5 million, 6 million hectare of body field, maybe around 40%, 50% are on the mostly with the bed drainage facility. So that why during the harvest season, especially when harvest on on March or on April, the party field is still wet, so the the combined investor is facing the big problem. So that's why uh, here we are in Indonesia concerned about the ground pressure and also minimum uh, what we call the the heat or uh, ground clearance of the machine is very important in Indonesia. Even though that all machine are produced in foreign country, that here is mostly produced by China manufacturing company. Even though that uh, managed by Yanmar or Kubota, but it mostly manufactured in in China. So that's why here I suggest to the GSM if we can solve the problem of standard and and quote about the combine but mostly produced in China I think Indonesia will be happy because the one thing that we can <coughs> we can solve the problem about the quality about the durability I think Indonesia will also get the impact of the resulted good code for this combine investor so this is the suggested scope for need to be evaluated on the future is in Indonesia we need to be more concerned about the durability and reliability of open investor because this is the more big challenge due to the terrain condition for the bad condition as I told before around 40 percent is on the wet condition so we need to to accompany and to, to establish about the system and we also in Indonesia now to make a more efficiency use of combine during one year suppose after finish uh, second crop of rice hopefully can be used for the another crop so we are <coughs> we are suggested that the uh, multi-crop combine investor is for the future need to be <coughs> to be adapted and of course the code it should be uh, <coughs> should be considered about that uh, multi-crop combine and about also the quality of uh, harvested product in here cleaning of uh, harvested is pro harvested product i think is very important for the moment for the big one of category combine it is okay because they are conscious Start from the sorting, cleaning, and even blowing. This is quite perfect. But in case for the small one, we have in Indonesia the small category. It look like uh, presented by Miss Ayesha from Thailand, from Sri Lanka. We have also several type, uh, similar type of that one. But the bad one is the cleaning device is not yet pro proper. So we need in here if possible through the GSM and, and, and TWU jet we can make a how we can make a minimum standard for the cleaning especially for the medium and small size of combined investor thank and you that's a good suggestion this very good suggestion okay for the next standard is also here about the standard of ground pressure actually even thought that right now there are many combined harvester already have a number of ground pressure. I mean, the width divided by the area is 
now around 0 0.19, 0 0.18, but uh, still, because, yeah, I'm sorry to say, because in Indonesia now, this, our government has the less facility to improve the party bit, so the fastest way to solve the problem about the lack of number working during during important thank you uh, yeah, i think we have to 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 finish if you want to say something shortly yeah, I, because they're telling me time is running out just additional so thank you very much i think for the future we can cooperate again together okay thank you thank very much Okay. Thank you. Thank you. A very yeah. valuable uh, contribution. I think uh, the three presentations have been very important, especially offering a view of what's going on in the countries who already have uh, testing procedures, who are applying standards, and it will be very useful when we will go in practice setting up and building the code on combined harvesters. And uh, so your valuable contributions will be fundamental to that. So time is running very fast. So I thank you again. And I give the word to Dr. Anshuman for the uh, conclusions. And um, thank you. And hope to see all of you soon in the technical working group. Thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you, Sandro. Uh, thank you to all to the presenters. Uh, I, I think we we are completely uh, uh, you know out of time, but beyond time. So, uh, but I think many of the questions that had come in the chat, although we're not uh, having time to take them, many of them have been uh, responded to uh, by by the uh, other speakers. So I think that's uh, that that that's a good part. Uh, so maybe I will just uh, very quickly, um, you know, uh, wrap up. Uh, I, I would, uh, of course, like to thank, uh, you know, all all the presenters, all the participants for attending this web training. Uh, we've had a very uh, intense and a very instructive uh, afternoon session um, that's brought us through a, a whole range of issues and solutions related to um, harvesting and to reduction of losses and safety of the agriculture, agricultural operations. Uh, we've heard the perspective of both uh, importing countries as well as producing countries. And uh, I think all this is, has great significance for the food security uh, in our region. Uh, and uh, at CSAM, we hope this brings us a step closer uh, to the realization of the 2030 agenda, in particular SDG 2 on uh, zero hunger. Uh, more immediately, this event will also contribute uh, to the work of the ANTAM Technical Working Group tasked with the drafting of a harmonized regional uh, code on combined harvesters. And uh, we hope uh, such a code will be a valuable instrument to enhance the uh, trade and the safer and more efficient machinery in, in our region. So I'd just like to thank once again all our speakers and presenters from all the different countries for sharing their valuable knowledge and expertise. Uh, thank you to uh, Sandro uh, of the Antam Technical Reference Unit for uh, your presentation and for your moderation. And of course, to all our participants who've uh, stayed with us you know, for, uh, for an extended uh, duration of this event uh, and, and uh, to have spared your time to, to participate. Uh, and thanks again to, uh, to Marco, to the, the team at CSAM who pulled pull this uh, event uh, together as well. Uh, I, I please do take a moment to fill in the uh, the, the feedback form, uh, the link for which has been circulated uh, in, in the chat. And please, we also invite you to uh, indicate in the form uh, any topics that uh, you think you would like to explore more uh, in depth in future uh, webinars of uh, ANTAM or of CSAM. So with that, uh, thank you very much for your time, for your participation and uh, wish you all the best and hope to see you again uh, sometime okay. soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, yeah. See you. Thank you, bye-bye. Uh, thank everybody. you, Sandro. Thank you, everybody. See you. Nice to meet okay, you. Thank you so, very much, everyone. Bye-bye. See you again bye. next time.